one of the most important things when it comes to defending yourself. The amount of stress on your body and your mind is incredible, even in a very short fight. And if your body's not conditioned to reach that red line and stay there and be able to function there well, uh, you will, regardless of the skills you have, fall apart when it comes to an actual conflict. Uh, that's one of the reasons when you look at Navy SEALs, we are always exceptionally fit. As a responsible person with growing concerns for your privacy and personal liberty, you want to know where we're headed and what you can do about it. We ask the experts what you need to do to take prudent and responsible action to safeguard your family's wealth and well-being and what basic first steps will help you to be aware and prepared. ReluctantPreppers.com Welcome back, Reluctant Preppers. Our special guest today is retired Navy SEAL Lieutenant Larry Yatch, co-founder of Sealed Mindset, who spends his professional time now training ordinary civilians and groups in leadership, fitness, and preparedness for self-defense situations. Larry, thank you for joining us. I'm really glad to be here. I wonder if before we get started with our specific questions, if you could just take a couple minutes to help our viewers understand your mission and your perspective and what your service is that you provide to your clients. No problem. From, I have to say, embarrassingly enough, uh, my journey started in third grade when I saw Top Gun and decided I wanted to be a fighter pilot. So it's all Tom Cruise's fault. And then uh, in seventh grade, I actually found out about the Navy SEALs. And at that point, I'd already been on the path to trying to get to the Naval Academy. And I did get into the Naval Academy, graduated, and was successful in getting a Naval Special Warfare billet to go to SEAL training right out of the Academy. I went through SEAL training, graduated in 1999, and was assigned to SEAL Team 3 on the West Coast. SEAL Team 3, at the time, was responsible for the Middle East. Uh, went on my first deployment, was lucky enough to be able to get into action right away. And then when I got home from that deployment, three days later, September 11th happened. So obviously being assigned to a team responsible for the Middle East uh, post 9-11 uh, meant that I was very busy for the rest of my career. I was injured a number of times and found myself lying in a hospital bed in Bethesda and the surgeon had come in and told me that I couldn't be a SEAL anymore, that I was going to be physically unfit to be in the Navy. And my wife, uh, who was my fiance at the time, she has a master's degree in international terrorism uh, from Georgetown. And she saw that I was lost, not knowing what I was going to do. And she knew that I was dedicated to protection, uh, to protecting not only our country, our way of life, but my fellow SEALs. And she knew I would not be fulfilled unless I was doing something along those lines. And so she came up with a concept that if I was able to leverage my experiences and my knowledge of it uh, as an officer in the SEAL teams, uh, use her to help me translate that, we could have the same desired effect of protecting the country but instead of doing it on the front lines, we do it one person at a time through education. And that was the start of Sealed Mindset. And can you give us a rough idea about how long that's been in place and uh, the types of training that you provide there? Definitely. We, we've had an evolution in our business. We started in 2000, uh, it would have been 2008. And we started initially with uh, training for corporations. Uh, then we moved to Minnesota and started our actual facility. So we have a over 10,000 square foot training facility based out of Minneapolis, Minnesota, where we run on average 140 individual training events every month, uh, everything from fitness through martial arts and firearms training. Our basic mission, uh, as I explained it, is to leverage Navy SEAL lessons to help individuals overcome challenges. And with that mission, it's a broad enough mission that we actually try to, to uh, impact society on as many levels as possible. So we have our actual facility where we do our physical training, uh, martial arts, fitness, firearms training, uh, all focused on self-defense. We have a school program that we facilitate in the local schools. Uh, we had over a thousand kids graduate from that program. 
this last summer uh, that was based on leadership development. So I view keeping society safe uh, both through teaching physical skills, but more importantly, conditioning the mind as well. So we have access through teachers and through the curriculum we write to uh, next year be over close to 5,000 kids. And then the final part of our business is corporate programs. So we work with corporations in the area, uh, mostly on leadership development and contingency planning. From the standpoint of an individual homeowner, a family leader who wants to make sure that they do the steps that they can do to keep themselves and their spouse and their children and their household safe, what are some of the first few key educational or mindset areas that you approach with people? I believe in what I've found with most of the clients that we work with that are concerned with those areas, it's we need to help them make a, a big mindset shift. Uh, most people uh, that are attempting to protect their family, their, their house to prepare, find that they focus on things. So they focus on hardening their house. They focus on purchasing uh, items to help them be safe. They purchase uh, firearms or tools to defend themselves. Uh, but what they do the least of, which is actually, I believe, the most important, is actually train. Knowledge will always overrule hardware when it comes to staying safe. And once we can show that through education, you can keep yourself and your family safer because your education can be applied to almost any situation, whereas specific tools only work in specific scenarios, uh, we see the biggest gains. So the first step is shifting to finding the right training. And by no means am I saying that we are the only ones that do that. There is really good training opportunities in almost any part of the country, and it just takes a little bit of effort to search them out. So what types of training are the ones that are top of mind in your approach that you think people should really look at um, taking on? One of the big ones, and this one is uh, would usually be seen as a little bit less obvious, is physical fitness. Being fit and being functionally fit, being able to do functional work, uh, is going to be one of the most important things when it comes to defending yourself. Uh, the amount of stress on your body and your mind is incredible, even in a very short fight. And if your body's not prepared to reach, you know, it isn't conditioned to reach that red line and stay there and be able to function there well, uh, you will, regardless of the skills you have, fall apart when it comes to an actual conflict. Uh, that's one of the reasons when you look at Navy SEALs, we are always exceptionally fit. It isn't because we need that fitness to do our jobs. It's because that fitness provides us the right mentality, the right mindset, and the ability to perform under great stress. So let's start with fitness. Uh, then from there, going into uh, unarmed self-defense, uh, you can't always rely on tools to protect yourself. So being able to get a firm base in functional unarmed self-defense, and again, that can be found in many different places. Uh, when you're looking for that, make sure that you're not looking at places that provide a study in an art form. Uh, there's martial arts, and the martial arts is a, a lot about discipline and history, and those things are great and good to study, but being able to functionally use the work is a different thing. Uh, the other one to steer clear of, or at least understand if you're using it, is the sport-based martial arts. Uh, with the increase of MMA, mixed martial arts, uh, you can find uh, good fight gyms all over the country, but it is really sport-based. So finding a good uh, self-defense-based system. Uh, and then the last thing is tools. Uh, as individuals, we're always going to be limited physically. Uh, we'll have capabilities and limitations, and depending on uh, our strength, our age, our knowledge, our capabilities and limitations will increase or decrease. And that means that at some point, all of us are going to rely on some form of tools to keep ourselves safe. And those tools could be uh, non-lethal tools. They could be edged weapons. They could be firearms. And being able to get a good education in the use of all of those different tools will increase your capability to keep yourself safe. 
So I guess we'll circle back if we have time at the end on some specific pointers on each of those categories. You did a nice outline there of uh, physical fitness, unarmed self-defense, and then use of tools. I'd like to jump into a few of our viewers' questions. We've invited our viewers to submit specific questions that they wanted us to address with you, and uh, so I'd like to touch on a few of those. 